So welcome to this mini presentation on the future and potential of automatic program repair tools. So this is work led by uh, Lancaster and it's part of the FIXI project uh, and it's a partnership with three other universities based across the UK. So I think it's best to start off with a couple of flagship examples because the past is the best indicator of the future. So by looking at what we've uh, managed to accomplish in the past, we can get some idea of where we might be going in the next uh, three to five years with these automatic program repair tools or APR tools as most people call them. So the first paper, the title really speaks for itself. Uh, it's a, a systematic study of automatic program repair and it fixes 55 bugs out of a total of 105 for a reported cost of 108. So there is a well-known set of uh, benchmarks which are available publicly and this system has managed to fix approximately half of those bugs. So it's a, a, a good start and this paper is a few years old and it's written by those people there which are based in the United States. And the $8 figure is arrived at by calculating the um, cloud computing time uh, required uh, to fix these bugs. So again, that $8 figure will vary in the future and it will obviously come down as cloud computing costs reduce. So this is quite a positive start for this area. Uh, and the second paper is called Fixing Bugs in Your Sleep, How Genetic Improvement Became an Overnight Success. So uh, genetic improvement is the technique we're using where we make small changes to the source code and hopefully we can catch those sort of small errors that are caused by a, a slip of the finger or maybe a small logical error where somebody's written true instead of false or a plus instead of a minus. So these sort of single character or maybe two character changes. Uh, and this uh, paper was written by um, one of the people on the project. Uh, and this is, the current project is building on this. So this is a, a good direction to be going in. Uh, the first paper there was uh, looking at programs written in C. And the second paper was looking at programs written in Python. And there are, of course, um, automatic program repair tools in uh, Java. So we're looking at the most popular languages. So these are two really good starts to this field. So let's draw an analogy with a, a spell checker, which we're all familiar with, with um, word processing. So if you remember back far enough, you maybe remember uh, word processors when they didn't have spell checkers. And I'm sure we're all quite reliant now on spell checkers. Um, and the point I'd like to make is that when we use a spell checker, we don't automatically accept um, the suggestion that's made. We might suggest, uh, so here on the left, for example, there are uh, six suggestions and it's guessing that the uh, misspelt word pair, P-A-I-R-E, is uh, one of those six there. And we can select which one we think uh, is the closest match to what we want. And of course, we can also do grammar checking. So these are things that are um, included in most uh, contemporary word processes these days. Uh, but the point is that we, we don't automatically accept these suggestions. We do still have to go through a manual, a manual process of deciding if we're gonna um, accept one of these suggestions. And then on the right hand side, we've got um, an integrated development environment. Uh, in this case, it's for Scala. It doesn't matter which language it is. Uh, but as you uh, type in your program, as you type in your commands, uh, just like with a word processor, in the background, we have uh, some processes which are checking uh, syntax and so on, uh, making sure that the, um, the rules of the programming language are adhered to. So there are some similarities here uh, and just as spell checkers really just work at the word level and they can they can begin to work at the sentence level in terms of the grammar they don't really go much further than that at the moment 
Uh, we are getting things like sentiment, analy sentiment analysis from natural language processing. So we, we're seeing some movement in this field. Uh, and on the right hand side, what we're trying to do is go further than your basic IDE and supplement the functionality of an IDE with these automatic program repair tools. So if there was a mistake in the code that we, we could automatically uh, detect it and automatically make suggestions, which the human programmer can then accept or reject. And this is a screenshot of um, a piece of software, which is the second paper I mentioned, the bug fixing overnight. So this is what the user might see. And it's a little bit like uh, what we would see with a spell checker. So we've got these columns on the left hand side. We've got the um, bug that was detected and the uh, exception that was thrown. Then we've got the frequency, so how often uh, this bug was detected. Uh, and of course, we will be looking at the bugs that are more frequently raised, um, as these are probably the most important ones. And then we have the location, which is where the bug was actually um, detected. So we've captured the stack trace and we know uh, the execution path of where the bug was detected. And then we have this column here, we're fixed or not fixed. So if a bug was reported to be fixed, we can click on the green box and it will give us uh, a list of suggested changes, just like uh, the spell checker. Uh, and on the right hand side, we've got this uh, small graph here. And this is just statistics about how, um, how well we think we fixed the bug, how long it took to fix the bug and so on. So uh, by analogy with uh, the spell checker, a spell checker just gives us a list of um, suggestions, but it doesn't give us, say, for example, probabilities or things like that, where if we want to increase the uptake of these automatic uh, program repair tools, maybe giving the user some statistics to say how certain we are, we think that our suggestion fixes the bug might be quite helpful. Okay, so on to the last slide, let's look at our long-term view. Uh, well, point one really is there's something called the halting problem and Rice's theorem. And these uh, are, are theoretical uh, theorems which basically state uh, that automatic bug fixing in, the f in its full version is impossible. So a complete APR tool is basically impossible, but that doesn't stop us uh, writing tools which can capture the vast majority of uh, bugs. And point three is these tools are still heavily dependent on the test cases. So if we have good quality test cases, uh, we can do a better job than if we have poor quality test cases. And of course, this is a, a general uh, idea from software engineering. So we really need to have uh, a good set of quality test cases accompanying the program. Uh, point four is most of these APR tools are written either in, or written for rather, Java, Python, or C or C++. And these are obviously the main uh, languages used in industry, so this is why they are targeted. Um, and we want to bring about improvements in the speed of these tools, uh, the quality and the quantity of the bugs they can fix. So at the moment, some of these tools are quite slow to operate, maybe overnight or using cloud computing facilities, as I said with those first two papers. But if we could get uh, these tools working online, responding immediately, that would be a fantastic uh, achievement, but we're a little way off that at the moment. Uh, at the moment, these programs, these APR tools are fixing quite small bugs, so we hope to aim to fix uh, larger bugs in the near future and fix more bugs. And the final point really is that we're not trying to um, de-skill programmers, Really what we're trying to do is support them. So these systems, these APR systems are decision support systems. So we're not trying to go full automation. So thank you for listening to that talk.